see that it's a bit better. My name's Rob Felstead and I'm a scientist here at Imperial College and I'm doing a PhD in chemical biology in my final year. Um, but as well as that, I'm also the musical director for production of Guys and Dolls by the Musical Theatre Society at Imperial, um, also known as MTSOC for short. How about a drink? Imperial College is a science university uh, specialising in all the sciences, engineering and medicine. One thing it doesn't have is any arts or humanities department. This summer our tour is going to Budley Salterton, where it's been going for the last 44 years. If you asked me when I was about 15 uh, what I was going to do with my life, it would have been art and, uh, and drama, And because at school I did all the shows and plays and things like that. Um, but around about sort of the age of 15, I stopped enjoying art and it just it stopped being fun. I, love I enjoyed being able to get things right. <laughs> um, I still enjoy finding out how things work and I enjoy the creativity that comes along with that. So, and there's much more of a sort of reliable uh, career path if you go through science, in my opinion anyway. So that was what eventually made me choose the science path. I always knew I wanted to do science and get the white coat and be stuck in some lab somewhere doing something that no one else understands. I thought that'd be quite cool. And yeah, so it was always quite an easy choice of doing physics. And I like the flowers, I like the daffodils, I like the mouse. I used to live in Blackburn and I moved down to Plymouth. And I didn't know many people, and I was only 11 at the time. And so my mum took me along with my cousin to this local musical theatre society. And they were all a bit wacky and a bit like singing and dancing around. And it was just such a great community feel that I just kept with it for like the next well, 10 years, yeah. <laughs> Tour is this amazing concept that in my first year just sounded so crazy that unfortunately I, I didn't do it. And so I did it last year and that was my first tour. And this year I'm chair of tour. It's quite an odd job because technically if everyone's doing theirs perfectly, I, I wouldn't have anything to do with it. It's been... <laughs> It's been a lot more wet. I probably ended up doing chemistry because I was good at it. Like, I always sort of wanted to do musical theatre. Like, I even sort of wanted to audition for drama school um, when I left school. But my parents and teachers and people persuaded me that it would be a good idea to, like, get a degree first. In that, like, so during the day, I'll do my degree, I'll do my work, I'll be in labs, go to lectures, and then there comes a point when, like, I do all the work I need to, but then that switches off, and then I go and have fun, which is where musical theatre comes in. Like, that's where all my really good friends are, so it's where I let off steam. It's if I if I just did my degree all the time, I think I'd just go a little bit crazy. So it's just it's the other side of my life, sort of like almost a Jekyll and Hyde type thing. <laughs> I, get my, like, I was getting my hair done once and I said oh, I'm going on tour and they're like oh do you study drama 
no, I, I do physics. And then just the look of shock. It's like, yeah, I'm actually, people are going to pay to come see a show that I'm in, and that's pretty special. And then you say, oh, but that's not what I do full time. I, I'm also a, a physics student, and there's two looks of shock there. And yeah, it doesn't really fit in people's heads very well. In science, like in musical theatre, you really need to be prepared before you um, go on, well, you don't go on stage in science, you go into a lab and do an experiment. But if you haven't read the lab script and you haven't looked up what your equipment you're going to be using, you'll be clueless and it won't go well. But if you've prepared and you've looked at other people who have done the same thing, then when you go into the lab, you can do something worthwhile. It's the same um, with musical theatre. You have to rehearse, you have to um, practice, you have to know what you're going to do. Take back your mink, take back your pearls. What made you think that I was one of I've yourself. just finished my degree in religion, philosophy and ethics at King's College London. And in this production of Guys and Dolls, I'm playing a hot box girl. I shouldn't really say this because I was president of musical theatre at King's, but the shows are definitely better here. Um, I think it's helped largely by the fact that scientists make epic techies. And there's a kind of logic to scientists' brains that can pick up dance moves quite well. Uh, so they're very like on the ball with everything they're picking up. And also more fun to be involved with because there aren't any divas in the science world. When you meet a gent, paying in all kinds of rent, or a black that can trap the Taj Mahal. Call it sad, call it funny, but spend an even money that the guys only do it for so long. And that is 53 minutes. Well done. Fantastic, that's the fastest it's been. Okay, uh, can we please just very quickly uh, clear up all of our stuff and head through into activity space one because the techies uh, want to dismantle the stage so we can prepare it for moving it to Budley. Well done though, that was fantastic. Thank you very much. We're building a theatre inside the village hall. We've got all sorts of scaffing, Scaffold stuff, scaffold clamps, deck wheels, all the metalwork in the world you could possibly want. We basically put everything in. So all the lighting bars, we put those in, the stage we put in, um, all the music stands, more music stands, and then moving on, more scaff, more scaff. Benches, that's for inside the last scene, for uh, sit down here off in the boat. Um, we've got our own house tab curtains, um, the bits that come in front and start. Um, basically, we take everything down. They've got some chairs, that's about it.
love having you here. It's great. And I get quite um, quite down when you've gone. I feel quite depressed because there's so much life and energy down in the hall whilst you're here. You know, with the, the setup for the first five days when you're building the set and um, having the rehearsals and everything, it's just so frantic. And then once the um, the performances have started, it all just becomes slightly calmer. But it's still there's still people here, and it's lovely to have the hall used um, so much. And then of course when you've gone, it's just big and empty again, and it's just quite quite sad, really. Yeah. It started with the wine. The wine. The wine. We were shopping for a bottle to bring to her cousin's soirée. My cousin is so chef. She's very gourmet. I grabbed my favourite Cabernet. He does has an agreement, so I say, darling, the wine. The wine? The wine. There's a month fish of darling, the wine can't be wet. How about this Austrian Riesling? I'm really good at holding pot. Honey, you know I don't like the Riesling. When have you ever seen me drink a Riesling? I never could find to miss the Riesling. Red wine and fish will look like a duck. Fine, I'll bring the red, you bring the white. That way, I'll still get drunk, you'll still be right. Fine. Fine. I really like coming to the country. I think roughing it's going to be really fun. Roughing it. <laughs> Having sheets on your airbed, that just doesn't it just doesn't You're make to be sense. Over here all the time. Yeah, yeah that's true. Like <laughs> Our banner was supposed to arrive on well, on Thursday, but that didn't happen. The banner is one of those big things that signals that ICOS is here, and you know, I, it's really important. I think it's really important. Very annoying. One of the lads, Rob uh, Felstead, he's musical director, isn't he, this year? But he's been in it. Um, he's been the whole lead and all sorts of things he's, uh, he's done in it in the last few years. And I didn't realise that he's doing something extremely geeky, isn't he? Chem in chemicals and it's like, wow, mm. PhD and God knows what. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's fairly impressive. And when <laughs> he, you speak to him, he just does seem just like a, you know, well, he's almost normal. <laughs> Four days is plenty of time to rehearse for a band, really, because most of the musicians can read music and it's all in front of them, so it's really just getting to know how the pieces go. But no one has to learn anything off by heart, and musicians are good. Collaborating with musicians and working with musicians is actually quite different to working with other scientists. I think generally you have to work together as an orchestra and as a band. It's really important that you get everyone to you know, be with you and follow you and when science, you do collaborate, you do work with people, but often, for the most part, it's working on your own. So you're doing experiments, you're doing everything yourself, and maybe you and your boss know the details and the ins and outs of it. And sometimes even your boss doesn't, you know, you're the only person who really knows what you're doing. I suppose um, biochemistry, PhD, none of that has really crossed my mind since I've been here. <laughs> The thing you have to remember about Buddley Salterton is people come here to die. And when they get here, they forget what they came for. <laughs> so, I cost, when they move into town, they actually reduce the age, average age limit of the town. Instead of being 192, it's down to about 90. That's a normal vanilla. That's a creamery vanilla. There's always a bit extra. Rehearsals, as a general rule, are devil spawn. Um, it involves a lot of standing around, 
and doing the same thing again and again and again and again and again while the techies get scene changes or lighting cues and things right. Um, a tech rehearsal is pretty much the worst part of any rehearsal process. It's like that experiment that you know should work, and someone's done it before so it does work, but however many times you try to do it, it just keeps going wrong and doesn't work, so you have to try it again and again and again and again until it finally works, then you move on to the next bit, which also doesn't work. Yeah, the first time when I, first time I went, it might have been Pirates of Penzance or something like that. And after about 20 minutes, I fell asleep, which was uh, a little bit embarrassing. But in the last few years, it's been easy listening more, you know, like Guys and Dolls this year. You know, it's, it's bringing up, I think it will bring in more youngsters to go and see it. My, my youngest child is 13, and we're going to see it later on during the, during the week. And he saw it last year, and we had a brilliant night. So he used to stay in the old scout hut years ago, and there used to be a few parties going, up, going on up there. I was invited to uh, a couple of parties several years ago, but I would, I wouldn't like to uh, say too much about that. <laughs> but I didn't think they were scientists, I thought they were all actors. <laughs> Katie, Hi. Um, projection was good once I sort of uh, reminded you, but just keep that up um, because it's sort of like there were times where it was sort of like, mm, you know, like kind of get into the boundary. So, uh, yeah, like a tan wave. Tan like a tan wave? Yeah, yeah, so Definitely like not like a tan wave, like a sine wave. wave. Stop this discussion. Now. <laughs> and then it goes completely quiet. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Tosin and Tom are going to love this um, for the, uh, the science, but yeah. Okay, right. Um, girls in hot.
in the hot box, watch your centre line. Um, it was for the most of the it was off to the right a little bit. Uh, and I mean, you can pitch it by looking at the um, the manhole because the manhole is pretty much dead centre. So just make sure that that's where you're focusing on to get the centre sorted. Sorry, Rob. Do you have a, any music notes before you head out to venture? No, it's yeah. really good. It's really good. Very very happy. Sounded amazing. So cool, cool, good. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Charlotte. And Christine, don't use the mission during Guys and Dogs. You kept on coming on and off by going into and out of the mission. <laughs> <laughs> Usually exit at the back, upright okay. exit. Just be standing sort of like beside it. So when the clubs are clear, then yeah, that's fine. I guess so. Waiting, but not sort of. What, what time is it? Oh, I don't know. Around four o'clock. This is your time of day, isn't it? I've never been up this late before. How do you like it? It's so peaceful. I'm going to sleep. Good night. Okay, who have I got in comms? Um, I've called the cast up, so we're ready to start in a minute. I'm just going to signal Rob. Okay, um, Rob's with us, so if everyone's ready, can we go to LX7, please? Perfect. And stand by the house tabs.
Come again, T. But ten. I win. Now I'm rolling two thousand. Get it up. Ha! I said it. ran the show with the entire cast was when we got down to Budley in the end because just everyone had things to do and it's very difficult to get everyone together man so I mean did they put it together or what I mean it's fantastic I'm so pleased that here's a superb example of people crossing boundaries from one discipline to another um, I think the whole of the science department seems to be here tonight all this electronics uh, and all the lighting and fantastic talent for uh, the singers and dancers and the musicians. So the whole thing is um, stunningly amazing. Really. Yeah, you can't really like compare this to work. It's just a totally different feeling because this is way more fun, whereas work can be quite boring. That's okay. not true. Geek. I like work. <laughs> but this is just different. Yes. Well, that's presumably why you started up your own business and why I'm auditioning for drama school. I think by the end of it, I'll probably you know want to learn some science again. Maybe, maybe not. Or maybe I want to go on an actual holiday where I don't get to have to do this every night. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting old. Um, yeah. <laughs>
In other words, just from waiting around for that plain little band of gold, a bison can develop a cold. You can spray her wherever you figure the strap to cock I like. You can give her a shot for whatever she's got, but it just won't wait. If she's tired of getting the fish eye from the hotel clique, a bison can develop a cold. So yeah, only two days after opening night and a week of us being in Budley when the banner should have been done back in London. It's finally up, finally looking amazing.